feel free to um, remove your video or to remove your picture. But I think we're going to launch into the launch into the um, session now. So I'm going to start sharing my screen. Um, and I'm going to start um, by start. I'm going to start with a keynote. So let me just get my bearings here. I want to say hello and welcome to all of you. And I also want to introduce you to my very nice, very gracious assistant, um, who is Katharina, who is from Germany. She is an ADE of Katharina. If you want to open your mic and tell us how long you have you been an ADE? Uh, now I've been on ADE from the last year. So best group ever, 2019. Hello, everybody. Yes. Yes, 2019. She's in um, 2019. I'm an ADE from 2017. I'm not sure if there's anybody on the call who's not an ADE. ADE means Apple Distinguished Educators. And yeah, we, we are very used to and very experienced in using Apple technology for innovative teaching and learning. But today I decided to present this really, really important topic. Um, how might we become a catalyst for change and embed anti-racism in our classrooms? I've delivered a similar session before, um, a previous online session that we had a few weeks ago in the EMEA region. Um, but um, yeah, I decided to do, it, to do this again today so we can um, all benefit and the whole global organiz organization can benefit. I just need to leave that and let somebody in. I want, ah, I have to see how I get, get to that. Okay, sorry. Thank you very much. So, so what is in store for you today? Well, Katarina, as I said, she's going to be helping me a little bit. So thank you very much for that, Katarina. And if you want to say anything at all, please feel free to write in the chat. Please feel free to open your mic and um, just, yeah, just interrupt me. I'm a teacher, I like to talk, so you have to interrupt me <laughs> if you wanna say something, right? So ADE, Festival of Learning, yay! Why are we here? Well, as anybody who has had eyes or a brain turned on to world events in the past few weeks and months, we know that there's this huge movement that has gained new momentum even in the past few weeks. This is the hashtag Black Lives Matter movement, which started, which we know started a few years ago uh, due to very, very unjust treatment of people of color in the States, primarily in the States. And this has actually evolved into something really, really bigger. This is actually probably one of the first times it has gotten a global dimension because we saw that there are many um, movement or many, 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 many uh, demonstrations and protests went on in other countries, also in Austria, where I live. I live in Austria and we also had a Black Lives Matter, several Black Lives Matter um, protests and demonstrations and maybe also in your country. Yes, Sean, thank you very much. It did begin with the Trayvon Martin incident. As a reminder, in case you don't know, uh, as a result of George Zimmerman's acquittal at trial, it, it began, right? So that is um, the context that we're in right now. Um, yeah, we're, we're observing this global movement. It's not a moment anymore, it's a movement. Um, let me just, so where are we starting the conversation tonight? We are starting a conversation, I just decided to use this really cool quote that I found on Robin DiAngelo's um, book, White Fragility. Just let me, let's ask open inside the, inside the meeting. I hope not to make the book because I can't see how I can do this on Zoom to let people in without leaving my, my presentation. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, she says it is actually not possible to say that we, that anybody, whether white, black, whatever, that somebody is um, not social, socialized as a, a I don't want to say racist, but we automatically into born into this um situation where all of our societies have been um informed or we have been socialized by the system where certain things are regarded as normal so this is a really really cool book in case i don't know if anybody has um read 
Oh, presenting window. Oh, somebody's saying presenting window. How do I do that? Can you please just let me see if I can do that? How do I do that presenting window? Can you share me? Can you tell me? I have to click present at top. Uh, in Keynote or in Zoom? Let me just see where I am. In Keynote, there is in the menu. Okay, let me just see if I can find that. Present, no, I can't do that. Window, window, window. No, I can't do that, interesting. Oh, can you open your pure mic and see? You were just on play slideshow and window. Go right. Go to play. No, all yeah. the way at the top of the menu bar. All the way to the top of the menu bar. Play. Yeah. Also play, play, yeah. Play slideshow and window. There you go. Okay. Thank you. Is this going to be cool? Okay, cool. Thank you very much. You need to reshare your screen because oh. you're sharing your keynote deck. So stop sharing and then reshare just that window that popped up. There you go. Perfect. Is this correct now? Okay. Yes. So you're just seeing my window, am I right? Now okay, we cool. see yeah, now we see keynote. Thank you very much. I hope this is gonna work. Right. So as I said, sorry about that, the technical thing. Um yeah, so we're starting the conversation from a point of view where we are all uh, faced with this uh, challenge of how to um, create the right kind of conditions and surround um, cultures in our classroom. And if you're not familiar with um, some of the things that are in this on this slide, I, I'm not surprised. I wasn't. If you be, To be really quite honest, I'm going to be really honest with you. Until I started reading up about this subject, I had no idea what was behind some of these um, terms. So if you don't know either, please don't feel bad. Please don't feel uncomfortable. This is not a place to be feel uncomfortable. This is the place to, to, to be curious, to say, oh, okay, I wonder what is behind this or this or that um, term. And I can assure you there's so much mm -hmm. behind these terms. Um, I learned for the first time um, what what white woman's tears. Well, I didn't really. I knew it was a thing, but I didn't realize it was a, a thing that one could talk about. Um, I, I learned about color blindness. I learned about microaggressions a lot more. And I'll be coming at the end of the session. I'll be giving you lots of links to resources that help me to understand what is really behind all of these terms. Yeah, but just. Um, take a minute and just realize that there's a lot, there are many, many aspects to this, um, to this topic that we're talking about right now. So, so what do we want is actually we want to change, yeah? And what kind of change do we want? We want change to be sustainable. We don't want it to be something that's here today and gone tomorrow. We don't want it to be something, okay, let's like, do it now. Um, and we will do it then later. We want actually to change. And if you, if you say we want to change, we'd like to, of course, start with ourselves. I like this uh, song by Michael Jackson. I'm sure you know the song. If you want to make the world a better place, take a look at yourself and make that change, which is, I think, words to live by. So if we want to do that, what does it look like for the people who are here in this session today? So you have survived my first, um, my first thoughts, my first impulses. We're gonna now, I'm gonna now do something I have never done before. I'm going to now invite you to join a numbers document and I'm going to open that numbers document in a minute, but it's a numbers document that is shared. You can see there's a, there's a, there's a bit link, there's a short link here and you can also scan it um, to open it. And I'd like you to uh, think about why are you here? What is what is what was your motivation for coming here? What do you want? Yeah. What is your big idea? I am not you. You don't. You are not me. You don't live in Austria. I don't live where you are. So why is it this subject really interests you? Yeah. So I'm going to now share my numbers document, and I hope that you guys have gotten the link. If not. Katarina is going to post a link in the chat. Am I right, Katarina? Yes, she has. She's perfect. So I'd just like to get some feedback. Do you guys see my uh, numbers file? 
either say yes in the chat. Oh, yes, wonderful. Thank you very much, Kelly. So I created this numbers document, first time in my life. Yay, new things. Because um, I, I was really inspired by all of the really great educators who've been using numbers to create some interactivity. So as you can see, if you are in the file, and I hope there are people in the file, I see there are, there are 13 people. There are little post-it notes, kind of post-it notes, sticky notes that are in, in principle, they're just text fields. I'm going to give you just like one few minutes just to take, grab a note and put what your big idea is. Um, don't be afraid if, if things are going to get a little bit confused. This is the way collaboration works, right? Um, you just take a note and you just put what you think is your big idea. I had an idea. Uh, my idea, my big idea was a classroom culture free of bias and racism. So as I said, take a minute to think about why, what is the motivation for you to come to this session? And as you can see, this this is a, it's like a more or less, it's not an infinity blackboard, but it is, is like a, a blackboard that you can actually scroll to the right. There's lots of room to the right. So you can um, feel free to, you, to, to write lots of things or just write a short sentence, however you want. So we're seeing a lots of activity on the board. Thank you so much for doing this. I see Laurie's uh, trying out the comments here. Also cool, why not? Thank you so much, 21 people in the file. Great, wonderful. So if I could just read a few things that you guys have written, please feel free to continue to write. So the question is, what do we want? Why are you here? What is your big idea? And yes, I did make it rhyme on purpose. What do you want? Why are you here? What is your big idea? Woo. Um, yeah, wow. So we see lots of stuff. We want to see somebody wants to uh, have an environment free of bullies which this person feels is free of racism or somebody would like to amplify voices. Um, somebody would like to provide equal progression of opportunities for all the students. So lots and lots of stuff here. I'm sure you can read yourself as well, but it's really cool. Maybe if you're finished writing your thing, you can take an, a heart and just put a, show some appreciation, give some love for those who have taken the time to write something. As I said, the, the blackboard does scroll to the right, so you can scroll to the right and see if you can uh, fill up the whole space. Oh, and so I love it that somebody has taken a new color. This is also cool. So as you can see, this is a great way to use numbers, uh, a shared numbers document for interactivity during an online session in case you're doing this with your class uh, or even with teachers if you're doing teacher training. Yeah, I love, love, love you guys. How you're doing all this? Great, you have passed the first test. Fantastic. Everybody's getting free merch. No, I'm not, like, sorry, I don't have any free merch. For you. Um, everybody's getting lots of love and appreciation from me from from uh, for for doing this. Very, very cool. Please feel free. Oh, somebody's even drawing. That's so cool. Um, thank you so much for telling us what your big idea is for telling us what your motivation is to be here. I'm going to go back to the keynote to see our next um, part, to see the next part. So if you can see my, if you can see my keynote, I'm just going to introduce you to where I'm from. So what we just did, we just said, okay, I'm starting with me. I want change. I have to start with me because I need to understand where I come from so I can understand what my cultural lens is. So why did I choose this slide? I want to really very, very proudly say I'm from Trinidad and Tobago. If you don't know where that is, it's in the Caribbean. It's next to Venezuela. I have had the privilege to grow up among black people. As you see, my mother's black. I consider myself black. My family on the right, that is my whole family. My father is half black, half Chinese. So his mother's of mixed Spanish, African, and his father was Chinese. So my grandfather came from China. I'm actually a quarter Chinese. And as you can see, my, my brother, he married somebody who's also mixed. These are my sisters here. We're all mixed. This is my niece in the middle. Her father's Indian Chinese mixed. And I included a picture of a classroom that I, I visited a few years ago in Trinidad where you can see majority black people. So I grew up in a majority black place. And it was completely normal for me. My bubble was 
black people being black is normal the black people were teachers policemen judges everything this was my normal being being with black people all the time this is completely normal to me right so fast forward several years i settled in austria because i married an austrian man and Austria, if you don't know where Austria is, Austria is in the middle of Europe. It's really in the middle of Europe. And of course, I live in a different environment. I have um, wonderful students here, just two students in the, in the corner pictured. Um, Xing Xin, who, came, who comes from China. And we have Berat, he's also the son of a migrant family. And as you can see here, I just, gave you an indication of what the name, the different kinds of names are in my classroom. As you can see, I have a completely mixed classroom in the sense that they are from everywhere. Austria is a place where people migrate to and lots of people have migrated to Austria from Turkey, from the ex yugoslav countries, from Chechnya, from Russia, from all over the place. So I am in a, in a country where Austrians in general consider them to be themselves to be normal and um, they consider people who come to the, to the country to be uh, well to be not well I don't want to say not normal but they're they're immigrants and they're foreigners so to speak right um why is this important I just want to make a, a an important point this is not a black a complete black white issue I know that black lives matters tends to be oh okay this is about uh, people of color in the states it's not about people of color in the states because we are a global community here at this session it's important to think about our own context we had zinia who said she's from indonesia she has a completely different context we have bronwyn here on the call and she's in south africa very different context very specific context and i just want to give you a little bit of an indication what it's like in my context to be a foreigner in Austria. So this is Gizem here in the middle, like on the, in the left hand side. She's um, actually Turkish. Um, she has she was born in Austria, but on the last day of school, the very last day of school, I asked her, "Oh, Gizem, I'm going to miss you. Um, how how are you feeling?" Can you? And I tried to ask her to tell me how to say "How are you?" in Turkish, and she said. I'm sorry, I can't tell you because I don't feel comfortable speaking Turkish with my teacher. She has been conditioned not to speak Turkish with other people because Austrians tend to say, oh, it's not cool to speak your mother tongue in front of me. This is uh, an indication here as well in the middle picture is in case you don't read German, it says, dear parents, here we, we speak only German at this school. So this is a principal who got a lot of flack, by the way, for posting this picture, this poster on his school door because he wanted the, to, to prevent the parents from speaking other languages and to prevent the students from speaking other languages. I don't know if this is the same thing in your country. If it is, let me know in the chat. Um, but this is something that is a, a huge thing in Austria. A lot of Austrians say, yes, they're supposed to speak only German and others say, well, excuse me, I can't just speak German. I can't just turn on a, a button and speak German. And I included the picture of these um, Nigerian uh, sisters here who are really, really cool who attend my school. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> just to make the point that, <coughs> excuse me, teachers do tend to expect <coughs> students and foreigners to assimilate. Yeah, this, I, this means they don't really accept or respect the difference. They say, oh, you have to behave Austrian. You have left your country, behave Austrian. <coughs> so this is why I wanted to give you again the opportunity. If you're still in the numbers file, you can go back in the numbers file and let all of us know what kind of things exist in your area, what kind of stereotypes in, in exist in your area, what kind of inequities exist in your area, how, do, how, do, how are people excluded in your area, what kind of biases are there in your region. Again, this is in the numbers file, so you should be able to find it. I'm just going to switch the numbers file again so you can see it. So this is in the second tab. So if you're looking for it, right? Oh, thank you. I see people are already very, very busy. So the question is, what kind of stereotypes, inequities, biases exist in your region? And of course, as I said, 
exclusion is a huge topic. Somebody was mentioning bullying before. I mentioned migrant families, refugees. Um, somebody is mentioning here on the board, rich and poor. So poor people are being ex excluded. Um, oh, somebody's mentioned First Nation groups in Canada. Yeah, so there are lots of things that all of us deal with. And of course, sometimes they're region specific. Um, and sometimes they're very overt and sometimes they're very subtle. So yeah, it could look very different in your area. Um, I put in, if you would like, you can put in also the flag where this, this thing happens. I put the little Austrian flag here because there's this huge stereotype in Austria that migrant families are not interested in education. They call all students who are from migrant families are educationally disadvantaged. Yeah. And they're generally looked down upon and um, yeah, they, they're not smart and they're not going to go to university. So why waste your time on them? Right. I see that John is saying that's crazy. Yeah, it is crazy, but this is the way Austrians take. As you know, Austria did give the world Hitler. Yeah. Which sometimes people forget. Right. Um, yeah. So it could be that it's, of course, it's different into in your area, but this is the way it is in Austria. So we have a lot of stereotypes and we generally especially also teachers don't expect much of students who come from migrant families, for example. Thank you so much for including all of your inputs on the file. Don't worry, relax. If you don't feel like participating, you can sit back and just relax and watch the interaction happen as again, this is a really cool way that I learned last week only at ADE Festival of Learning. Woo! how to use numbers to interact with people online. If you want, you can take one of these little um, shocked emojis and just put it next to uh, something that you think is um, shocking. Yeah, so I just put a little uh, emoji next to homophobia and it's true, this is also something that's coming up, gender, gender equality. There are people, for example, who, are, um, who have autism or who have learning disabilities who are very um, dis discriminated against, right? So yeah, lots of things going on. Thank you so much for doing this. I'm just gonna look through. Oh, North versus South even, that's interesting. I wonder well, how, does that, how does that work? Um, yeah, somebody's saying lots of denials. I'm just reading a few. Um, so Bronwyn is in the lucky position. She's saying in the chat that students are allowed to speak the different languages, which is really cool, which is not the case here. Yeah. Um, we have, oh, only 1% of Irish travelers. Thank you for mentioning that. That could be Miriam who mentioned that. That travelers are also a group who are, have, been, uh, just have had lots of discrimination in the past. Right? Miriam, was that you? If you want, you could just put it in the chat. Yeah. Um, um, so our Irish, like if you have a, an Irish traveler student, they typically leave school at about 16. So progressing beyond like second level is quite rare. Um, it's good when they do, but it's kind of believed that they won't. So sometimes schools don't make up the same effort for them. Wow, exactly. And this is, this is, this is, this is the thing that you're saying can be replicated in almost every context, I'm sure. Yeah, what we also have in Austria, we, there are people are against Syrians, they're against Muslims. I mean, the, the list goes on and on and on, right? Um, yeah, so please feel free to continue either perusing the first tab or perusing the second tab while we move on in our discussion, because we would like to come together and see what kind of things we can do. So what we actually would like to do uh, here tonight is we want to see how we can all as a community but each person individually can think about what kind of action plan we can start um, doing or we can start using to reach every student and help them thrive as independent learners yeah and i've decided to use a cbl framework which was demonstrated beautifully last week by several people it was uh, katie morrow demonstrated it in her session uh christina kleinen demonstrated in her session um, I'm not really, I, I've never really used CBL before, so I, please be gentle with me. Uh, but I prepared uh, the, this framework so we can work through this question using this framework. 
And what I have done, as you see in the numbers file, I have CBL start, there's a tab called CBL start, where I have more or less the three main phases of the CBL framework written out for you, but I just have them under each tab. So we have the tab engage, we have the tab investigate, and we have the tab act. And during all the phases of CBL, um, we have the uh, recommendation that everything should be documented, reflected on and shared. And here I have just four icons demonstrating, oh, you can do it by voice. You can, you, you can, you can do it by video. You can do it by photographs. You can, for example, say, okay, what is my journey in photographs? And for the musically uh, inclined, oh, you could even do it in, a, in, a, in music. Yeah. So feel free to do that. Thank you so much for the for the interest in the chat. So we are going to move right now on to the engage tab and I'm going to show you what it's like. And I'm going to um, just give you a few hints. So CBL, if you're new to CBL, I'm just going to show you uh, here in the tab where it says CBL start. I know that many of you know about CBL already, but here I've just summed it up for you. So it's just these three phases. So the, three, the first phase is engage. So engage phase helps us to really hone down our question and really get to know what is our big idea and what do we really want, yeah? It's really important to have a specific goal, a specific thing we want to come to. And this engage has uh, three different phases where we say, okay, we would like to have a big idea. What are the essential questions? What are the critical elements? And um, what is then our challenge? So for example, here are some examples I have put. I, for example, have put my big idea would be this. And of course, this can, this can go down longer if you want. Yeah, this is, this is not a problem in case you want to make it longer, right? Um, I would love to uh, explore the question, how, how can this be done? Yeah, so this would be my idea. And then the challenge would be to design a culture of equity where no one is marginalized, right? So this would be my, this would be my um, three suggestions here. And... Um, I would like to encourage you to also use this framework to put some ideas of your own. While you are doing that, I'm going to go back to the keynote because I have a few thoughts that may help you to hone your idea, to get your, your thoughts in order. So one thing you can think about is, okay, what is my personal background and my connection to this topic, right? As I mentioned before, what is, what is my particular cultural lens? As, as I said, I have a very, very specific cultural lens. I grew up among black people. It was like normal for me to see black people all the time right or people of color all the time yeah because we have lots of indians as well who they consider themselves also black by the way in um in in, in trinidad um then of course think about the critical aspects in your region think about what uh misconceptions there are um in your region and this will help us to define what our ultimate goal is and find out actually what is what is what is this culturally responsive teaching what are these what do these words mean yeah and this will help us to formulate that as a so that's a question um how can we agree on what we want how can i engage other people because we don't want to take this journey on our own yeah we want to have a few allies we want to have a few companions i mean traveling is always much more fun if we go with other people so who can i who can i um, um help my how can i continue this journey with other people um so i'm going to go back to the numbers file and see what you guys are writing i'm sure you're being very very busy thank you so much for actually engaging with this way of um interacting thank you very much so i see a lot of um people, a lot of activity on the, on the file. As I said, again, great way to, you know, kind of structure your thinking to kind of, okay, let's see, how can I, can I do this? And what would be the next step? If you say we want to document this step, yeah? You could, for example, say, okay, I would like to, according to your big idea or according to your challenge, I would love to now just choose a picture that shows this, that, that represents this the best. Yeah. Um, and you can, of course, put this on the on the side if you want. You can even draw something if you would like just to say, OK, this is this is what uh, I would like to have as my challenge. So I'm seeing lots of lots of things here. Uh huh. How do I provide rigorous content for all learners? Um, how can we cultivate curiosity and healthy dialogue? Very, very good point. Healthy dialogue. Um, yeah. How can we learn? 
<coughs> but I think the person is still writing in. Okay, very cool. I, I'm loving how, the way how this is actually being developed by all of you. Really, really cool. Whose story is it? Very good. Okay, so in case you're, as I said, if you're new to CBL, this is a really very dynamic phase where we're, we're trying to go from, we're trying to really get get to the meat of the matter. What, what do we really want, right? Thank you so much. You can feel free to continue to populate the, the table. You can feel free to document what, what your thought is. If you can find a picture, you can add it. If you can draw something that represents what your, your, your challenge is, what the result of your engage phase is. Thank you so much. Um, I'm not sure exactly one second. So let me just see. I'm going back to my keynote file. Thank you so much for um, your input so far. So the investigate phase is, a, of course, a very important phase um, where we really go out and we really do research. We really find answers to questions or we find ways how to we try to say okay how can i really do this um we try to define some aspects right so how does my school currently deal with diversity maybe you can you know okay will that maybe be a question um what anti-racist strategies can i as a person as a teacher as an educator um implement or as a leader maybe some of you are school leaders maybe some of you are responsible for the school vision um, how do teachers deal with other languages? These are just, these are just examples, yeah? I found this really, really cool um, quote from somebody in the book that I'm gonna re reference at the end. Um, I have 19 different cultures represented in my classroom. Do I have to learn about the customs, foods, beliefs of all 90 different cultures? Some people may ask that, right? Um, or how can I make it a movement rather than a moment, yeah? So let's just go back to the numbers document and see what's going on there. Um, yep, I'm back again. So the engage, the engage tab is 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 has been full. It's really cool. Thank you so much. Let's see the investigate investigate tab. So let me just make this a little longer for you. Um, Another thing that you can also think about is in the investigate phase is how can I educate myself or where do I start, right? That would be, for example, a, a guiding question for me. Or as we said before, how can I involve people that I'm not alone, yeah? Or what best practices are there? Uh, and interesting, the interesting that I, that I found out in my journey so far is that there's been so much research done. All of these things are research based. Yeah, there's lots of studies that have been done in many, many different countries. There are many, many different schools and regions who have already done work. Yeah, Bronwyn is on the call, as, as I said, so she, maybe she can just open her mic and, and just give us a, a small indication of what is, for example, how does, how does South Africa deal with um, these kind of topics? I know this is a very specific lens, but maybe you can just uh, give us a, a little hint, Bronwyn. <clears throat> Thank you, Alicia. So um, we're certainly in a very different space um, in a global perspective, and we have uh, walked a long journey, but we still have a long road ahead of us. And I think the crucial part of it is respecting each other and being able to feel free to tell our stories and being feeling free to be ourselves without shame. And recognizing, I think at the moment, a lot of South Africans, we refer to ourselves as recovering racists. And, um, and that is a, a safer place to be because we recognize that a lot of the way we think and a lot of the things we, we think and the way we've, we filter things are through a lens through which we grew up and we having to unlearn a lot of what we knew um, as our reality and as, you know, in terms of the way we were raised and the lenses through which we looked at things. So it's about, um, we have a transformation committee in our school and we oh, have wow. people give us insight into the different cultures and different ways that people see things and view things. So I know we chatted before, but one example would be um, when I was at university back in 1992, which was very early um, democracy for South Africa, we had a very progressive dean who said to us, right, all of you sit together and understand that if you're from a Zulu culture and you're, you're speaking quietly in a passage or somewhere, 
we take it that you're talking about somebody. So we speak a Zulu culture, you speak loudly so that we don't get offended. So it's those kinds of things about being sensitive to different cultural norms and recognizing that a lot of the way we th we're viewing things might actually not be offensive. It might just be the cultural norm and we need to be sensitive to that. But that's a long journey ahead of us. We've still got a lot of work to do. And I think by recognizing that we're making mistakes and we're not perfect and that we're willing to learn and unlearn um, mm -hmm. uh, some of the cultural biases we have, I think that's important. And I think that's where the healing begins is when we recognize, we give people safety and opportunity to express their pain, then we can deal with the anger that has come with that. Wow. And I really have to say, I'm, I'm, of course, you guys are really far about, well, if you've made lots of progress, I know you've said there's a lot of work to be done, but you have to imagine other countries haven't even started the conversation. So uh, I, have, I have to say, I, 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 I find it's really great that you guys have done this, well, you guys, that the country has done it, and that it's actually part of policy, because that is a, a step that a lot of countries have not actually understood that it has to be part of policy yeah um school policy and also the country like country policy so thank you so much for sharing in case anybody wants to hear more of bronwyn's story feel free to to hit her up uh to to, to contact her very fascinating what uh, has um put in place um for this kind of thing for this kind of topic very very important topic so what i wanted to do now is i wanted to give you um a few we're now moved on to the act stage and i'm conscious of time and i also want to give you a little bit of time maybe just to share uh, ideas or uh, questions or comments uh, i'm going to give you time I, you know how this works by now um the, on the in the numbers file there's an act phase there's an act tab so and the act tab is where you have to you're, you're charged with your challenge with okay what is my solution? What is what is the solution that I am going to come up with? How am I going to um, present it? How am I going to display it? What form is it going to take? Yeah. And of course, what I really want to also point out is if you say you want to have an action plan, uh, the action plan is not just, please, please, please understand me correctly. It's not just, oh, I'm going to put more books in the library that have black authors or people of color or i'm going to decorate my classroom in a different way that is of course also in good yeah but we do as women said we have to unlearn what certain things are and this is really really very important i get this all the time i don't it, it's really interesting that people around me say oh this is the skin color and then I look at the person and say, well, this is not my skin color. And I found this on Facebook. I hope the person who made it is not mad at me, this, this little uh, illustration on the left. And these are all the different kinds of skin colors there are, skin tones there are. There's no one skin tone. Yeah? Um, and I just took the liberty of just putting my image in a keynote and trying to find my color. And I, one, of, one of these is my color, for example, right? my skin tone. So if we're making, uh, if we're making uh, materials in the class, visuals matter, yeah? If we're making materials, let's not forget that people have different skin tones. It sounds obvious, but it's not, not obvious for everybody, right? Yes, I know, Kelly, pantyhose, I know. I had the same situation happen to me when I went into, into a store and asked for pantyhose. I just said, we only have skin color. And I looked at her, okay, well, thank you, right? Um, and there's lots of things we can do as Apple educators to, because we have the different technology, we have the technology where kids can be created, we can create, we have the freedom to create our own materials and uh, using Apple technology is really cool with that. So what would be your solution prototype? What would your action plan look like, right? Um, what will help you start conversation with others? Are you gonna do a sketch note? Are you going to do, um, a mission statement? Are you going to do um, uh, a plan, like a monthly plan, like a challenge? Are you going to challenge yourself? And one of the one of the most important questions is how are you going to revisit your plan to check up if you've made progress? Yeah. So we, uh, how are you going to um, maybe bring it to your staff meetings? How are you going to be able to start conversations? Are you going to, for example, develop an anti-racist policy for your school? Um, are you thinking about a social media campaign, maybe on Twitter, 
Are you thinking about a challenge or are you thinking about how you can embed this into the school vision or charter? So of course, let me just go back to the, to the numbers file and, and, and show you where place for this interaction would be in the act tab. So again, um, what the question is again, what would be your, what would your solution look like? How would you prototype your solution? Um, it my you can say my action plan will be, or my proposal will be to have a meeting, for example, with, with staff, uh, or have a meeting with principal. Um, my feedback will be, or feedback will be given in this or that fashion, right? Are you going to create materials for your teachers? Are you going to hold a staff meeting and say, okay, well, let's see how, what our diversity policy is. Let's see what our language policy is, right? Um, so this is, this is the space for your solution. Um, this is the space for your implementation. So how are you going to really bring that change about? And again, evaluation is really, really key. So we need to circle back and see how we can ensure that the measures that we take are going to be successful. Right. So thank you very, very much again for all, all of you who are willing to, to share in the file. Um, I'm going to go back to the keynote because I have a few ideas as well that we can do that I found that I found that are really cool. So I just wanted to give you these ideas. Um, Kurt Kleinen, maybe a few of you know Kurt Kleinen, he posted a really cool idea um, of, uh, yeah, what's my name? And maybe you may not understand why this is important for people who have different names. Uh, as I mentioned before, I had a Chinese student this year and she came into my class, her name is Tian Xin, and it's a really, really hard name to pronounce. <coughs> and because she noticed that people had pro trouble, she said, my name is Rebecca. So she anglicized her name right away. <coughs> and I had a really hard time, me, myself, trying to convince my other teachers, we have to learn how to, 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 to pronounce her name because this is the most important thing. This is the most important thing about her identity and she's bending herself backwards to make sure that we are accommodated, that this is not cool, yeah? This is why I found this activity by Kurt really, really good. Why not do a My Name Is activity and where the students have the chance to say their name and where the, the, the class has a chance to practice the name, how the name is pronounced and how the name is, um, how the name is said. <coughs> I see that Kelly has posted something. Is this something that Kelly you know about? I know, for example, I, my silly example, yeah, my name is Alicia. I call myself Alicia, yeah? If somebody says to me, Alicia, I get, I go like this. Mm. Mm -mm, I don't like Alicia. My name is Alicia. It's important for me that people say Alicia. Yeah. So yeah, let's give students that that chance to make sure that we know how to pronounce their name. What I found on uh, social media this week is a really, really cool idea that I saw um, somebody posted. It's, it's a CNN article. There's a, a teenager who has created an anti-racism calendar why not do this? Guys, we have keynote, we have lots of stuff. <coughs> Let's create an anti-racism calendar. And the great thing about this anti-racism calendar is she has made a, a downloadable. So if you go to the link, I don't know if I can ask Katarina to post the link into the chat. <coughs> um, you can go to the link and you can download it. I think it's in, in it's a Google, it's a Google Doc. She has had, she has put her ideas, of course. Why not do this with a class? Why not create this with a class or create this with a, with a, with a staff, with, a, with your staff? Create, co-create an anti-racism calendar. Why not? Have little things to do every day um, to make sure that we, that we continue our journey towards education. <coughs> yeah, thank you very much, Kelly, for that comment. Of course, we can have the families involved as well. Very, very cool idea. Um, one of my very, very famous, uh, favorite ideas uh, that has come from a very favorite person of mine, Laura Wright, whom some of you know. She's an ADE who's now living in the, in the Netherlands, originally from Australia. She does wonderful things. And she has created a human character maker, which I used as well this year to create a yearbook cover. So I asked her if it would be okay if I could use her cut. She said, fine, great, no problem. And I, this is on the cover of my yearbook because I have, I'm charged with doing the yearbook for my school. So I said, well, why not? Yeah. Um, and this is what I created. So why not take 
Laura Wright's character maker and have the students create avatars and have an avatar class <clears throat> or have you have the, 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 the teachers create themselves in avatars. It's a really, really cool. Kids love avatars. Yeah. It's a really, really cool way to see yourself. Yeah. How many of us look at things we don't see ourselves? Yeah. Because we're not represented. Yeah. Um, so again, if you want to give Laura Wright some love, um, go ahead. She's a wonderful educator and has really, really great ideas and very, very generously um, gives them away, so to speak, as, as many of them do, as many of us do. So I did mention um, re resources. And I have to say, I, as I said, I only started this journey, um, I was at this purposefully. Yeah, I've been a black person all my life, but I've started this journey purposefully a few weeks ago, a few months ago. So I did start with a really, really cool books. And I have to say, um, White Fragility was a really, really important book for me because it taught me how, um, what's going on in, let's just say, white people's head. I know it sounds really weird, but please, please don't get mad at me for saying this. She, it's a really, really cool um, book. She's, um, yeah, I don't have to say, please read the book. Um, one book I read, Between the World and Me, by uh, Coates, and the one by Ibrahim Kendi, they are also very, very important books for learning the perspective from a, from, a, from a Black man. So they both relate what it is to be like in the skin, yeah, which is, of course, not one-to-one -one my situation, but it's really very eye-opening. And if you really want to get into the nitty-gritty of school context, you have to read Why Are All the Black Kids Sitting in the caf Cafeteria? She explains it really well from a brain research point of view. Yeah. So these are things, for example, I've, I've read on my Kindle and on the Audible app. If you're asking yourself, where do I find the time to read? This is my, this is the way how I do it. Right. Um, it's, it's, it's audiobook. It's on Audible and it's on, it's on my Kindle. So I just, you know, I, while I'm driving, while I commute to work or whatever, I just, I just get it. And of course, podcasts. So please, please, please. The 1619 podcast is on Apple podcasts. Please get it. It's really cool. Um, the Teaching While White podcast is also very good. She had a very good conversation with Ibrahim Kendi. Uh, and the Cult of Pedagogy podcast I've also included here because she has, she has very often discussions with, um, with educators who have been doing this for years. Yeah. So, and my very, very most favorite recommendation to you is <clears throat> to read Culturally Responsive Teaching in the Brain which changed my wife, my life, sorry, my life, because she really also explains this from a brain research perspective and really explains why it is important. Even if you say, okay, I have only white kids in my class, which may be the case, okay, you need to read this book because she explains what's going on in everybody's heads when they, when, when they feel marginalized. A marginalized student, a student who has been marginalized, who has been excluded is not going to want to learn. So we need to learn how to respond, how to address, how to, what is the key to opening up the brain um, with this, with the, with culturally responsive teaching. So it's really, really very, very well tied to the anti-racist, anti-racist uh, and culturally responsive um, aspect of the, of the matter. And of course I have, um, loaded all of my because when I'm, I'm a person when I start studying something I, I try to curate all my resources so I have created all resources and I'm and it's being added every day on my Padlet um, it's either teach anti-racism or you can use the long the long version and this is just a snapshot of the Padlet <clears throat> Wait, so you can see that it's, it's, it's in categories. I try to put you notebooks, know, podcasts, their teaching strategies. They're really, really cool um, pictures, images that I found, uh, really cool explanations, definitions that you will, you will come to know. So everything I, I learn, everything I find on social media, because I read a lot, I'm online a lot. So I read a lot, I see things, so uh, I just put it on. So thanks a lot, thanks a lot for your feedback um, that the, about the Padlet. So, as I said, things need to change. This is my statement for this week. I'm sure Kelly Gillis is going to say yay, because this week's creativity challenge is, <laughs> is make a statement for change, yeah? What is going to be your statement? You can even use the chance now to think about what is going to be your statement this week 
if you would you like to be a culturally responsive educator would you like to be an anti-racist educator what is your statement what is your quote what is your sketch note what it is what are you going to do to help yourself uh, make progress and so if you make progress others can make progress if we start conversations if we learn how to lead these conversations and how and if we learn how to feel how to get used to being uncomfortable with these conversations because this is this is not easy i had a conversation with my husband who is a white austrian for example about the fact that people used to ask me all the time where did you learn german your german is so good i mean it used to get me on my nerves right and I mean, these are conversations that are not easy because he doesn't really understand what it's like from my perspective, even though, even though he loves me, right? So it, it is not easy, but guys, we are ADEs. We are innovative educators. We can do anything, right? And am I right? So we are used to, 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 to getting our hands dirty, getting our fingers dirty and, and, and delving into subject matter and um, yeah, making sure that we make progress because we want, we want to be better. We want to be better educators. So this, I hope you understand why I spent all of energy on trying to make the statement true and uh, you have to be if you are a 21st century educator you have to be an anti-racist educator is my view and I hope I could convince you maybe you were convinced before but I just wanted to make sure that you understand what my reasoning behind this was so guys what is your action plan and with that I have to say thank you so much that's it Thank you so much. And that, that's it. So I'm going to pause my sharing right now. I'm going to stop my, I'm going to stop my sharing. I'm going to open up the, the mic. You can rant, you can comment, you can yay in the chat. You can, yeah, feel free. Feel free to, co to copy the, the numbers file. Um, feel free to copy the, I'm going to put the keynote in, in the space. Um, so you can maybe use it for your own, um, for your own, um, staff or your own team. So guys, what do you, what, who wants to say something? Yay, yay, nay. Or you can also use the, the reaction. Zoom has reactions. So you can, well, and luckily they're only positive reactions. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, you can please send up, send, send me a bit of the reactions. Thank you so much for your feedback. <coughs> Oh, great. I'm seeing some reactions. Thank you so much. Alicia, um, and did I say it correctly that time? Sorry, what? Did I say it correctly? Alicia. Alicia, Alicia, Alicia. I always yes, get it Alicia. like, okay. Alicia. Yes, thank right. you very much. It's on, Alicia. It's, it's, Alicia. Again. It's, it's a Spanish version. It's, it, all you have to do is say it, it's a Spanish version. So Spanish people say Alicia, Alicia. They don't say Alicia. They say Alicia. Yeah, it's yeah, true. Right. It's kind of true. But I'm not gonna be I'm never gonna be pissed at you, Barman, please. <laughs> no, my name's impossible. All right, um <laughs> Welsh and French combined. It's not not fun. Um I w I'm gonna throw this out there. So one of our um our current acting reverend is in the session, she's at our school, Lisa. I would love her to share um with everyone. She's got a very unique perspective on things. Um, she's going to hate me for this. <laughs> Please, I think could add some real value here if she wouldn't mind unmuting this. Hey, oh, can okay. you hear ah, Sorry, my, oh, great. it froze up there. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Recording because we're, we're more or less in the in the in the after show uh, part, part of part of the work. So if you guys want to have want to stick around, feel free. I'm just going to stop recording and let um, uh,